Okay, a student sent me a question about At Atwood's machine. So we're going to look at the analysis that they did. So this is the file that they sent me. Um, first of all, uh, apology, um, aphasia. been having a problem with that. Um, so, so sometimes my words don't make any sense, but um, I'll, I'll try to do my best. All right, first of all, let's investigate. They, they had a concern about specifically uh, the chart they said their theory line and their data line looked a little bit off from one another and I agree I've also noticed something curious over here there seems to be two y-axes um, and then an acceleration axis so things aren't exactly the way we'd expect them to be so let's investigate the data let's start by looking at the masses and these look acceptable total mass well here we would really expect to see a sum equals this mass plus this mass okay a mathematical sum and you know I'm sure it's the same thing let's just drag this down one by one and see if the values stay the same and, and indeed we were supposed to see the same value except for uncertainties so let's just keep dragging this down there's a little bit of variance right here um, that's okay so we have a total mass that was supposed to say the same because the idea was they were taking one washer from this mass and putting it over on this mass to create run two and then again moving a washer from here to here it was a small five gram mass or so and with each run they were simply shifting a washer from one side to the other increasing the difference in the mass but the total mass should stay the same. Now, it doesn't appear to stay exactly the same, and I kind of appreciate that because there should be uncertainties here. This mass is not, we don't know that exactly, right? There's some uncertainties here. Likewise with mass two. And so when we add them up, that uncertainty, let's say it's a one-tenth of a gram right here, and one tenth of a gram here we could see some fluctuations here in these numbers and in fact here we hit we see that one tenth of a gram difference here and here it's a little bigger so maybe a wrong value was recorded but that's okay now right here we wanted to see instead of a number so I can see that these students did not learn to um, or do not appreciate the idea of using formulas so I'm going to type equals average and then highlight total mass from the first value to the last value and that writes this reference for me and then I can close the parentheses and just hit return and see I get the same number so I know they calculated things properly but it kinda helps and by the way I'm increasing the decimal places right here so that I can see one more decimal place see that there's a slight variation now right here it says the uncertainty in math mass so I'm going to do equals STDEV open parentheses and highlight the exact same values again for total mass be careful not to highlight the accelerations because these are not the same numbers we don't expect that instead this average right here these were supposed to be the similar numbers so we're going to find out how different they are the standard deviations should tell us how big a difference between all these and it looks like oh that's pretty cool it's two two grams let's increase the decimal place one okay so we have 1.7 gram uncertainty and normally we just in this lab we just want to show one significant figure for the uncertainty it tells us to what decimal place we know this number and at that decimal place how can we count and so now I can reduce this to match decimal places with my uncertainty now the acceleration should have just been a value inputted from data studio it was velocity versus time the slope the applied force we should have the difference in masses difference in b2 and c2 times g 9.8 that looks good so they do know how to do formulas and they filled those down and we have all all those same numbers Newton to applied force so here we have B12 plus D12 I think we just found their mistake 
because we wanted to take uh, this equation should be the the total mass times acceleration but we're going to even be more careful than that um, the the reason we want it a lot more carefully because the um, the total mass remember is changing a little bit because of uncertainties and Newton two force is supposed to be this was supposed to be um, a theory okay this value right here so we want to make sure that our slope is constant all right so we're going to use this value right here for the slope instead of the individual total masses because these values are changing which would no longer allow this data to appear perfectly linear instead it would have some scatter as we expect our applied force to have so we're going to take the newton 2 equation and, and rewrite this equals the average total mass but here i want to be careful watch this i want to put in a dollar sign right here because when i fill this equation down i always want to look at d20 and then i'm going to multiply by the acceleration hit return and look these numbers are a lot closer than last time we can see in, that there's going to be a vertical shift in the real data but this um, theoretical data set see now we're tracking the numbers previously were quite a bit different off and so we found the problem and that was creating that plot and in fact if we go back to their chart well, I'm not sure what's happening there because it didn't update so we'll just create a new plot all right but before we create that plot let's scroll down here and see how we're doing we want to compare the the slope which we can say equals slope open parentheses and we choose the y values first see right here it says give the known y's and comma and the known x's so my known y's are up here um, we have applied force and just go to there not to the blank there and comma and then the x's are right here and then we can close parentheses and hit return so now we have way too many significant f oops yeah way too many significant figures so i'm going to reduce those up here but a bing three sig figs and in fact let's um let's use the formatting palette format and copy this so we get the right units there we go and then we'll take off the color because that green color specifically meant um, average system mass and here we have the slope from the graph which is a little bit bigger but that's okay and here again we use formulas because if we change values then um, things don't update so we're going to take this number minus this one and the one we expected was the the average mass from the balance because we know that's pretty true right we measured these things and it wasn't too hard to measure them so we kind of trust this number something's going on with the slope so we're going to divide by our expected value of 219 grams and this cell is already formatted as a percent which means it's going to multiply by 100 and give us a percentage sign okay and the vertical intercept is simply from the plot um, which we haven't plotted yet but we can just find it this way intercept pardon me i have a little bit of a cold here and we do the same thing the known y's and then comma and the known x's and then close the parentheses and there we go okay it's so a little bit of an intercept it means there's some friction in the system which we know this value should be equal to twice the friction in one pulley. Now let's go down here and look at the accelerations because the last trials, they dropped five times. They did a good job. And oh, there's different acceleration values. They found the average here, but again, they didn't have a formula. So average, oops, equals average if i select it in the list then it gives me the parentheses and i just have to highlight and hit return now the standard deviation it looks like they did this one properly standard deviation of those cells but again we're showing way too many sig figs the idea with standard deviation for this lab is we're just going to look at one significant figure because it tells us 
to what, what decimal place we can measure the acceleration. And so I'm going to reduce the sig figs and the acceleration to match. Now we're also missing some units here, so we're going to insert some cells and just give ourselves some meters per second per second. Okay, because that is the unit indeed of this data. So probably like that. Okay, so that describes all these values. And then just for the fun of it, let's go down here and say equals the uncertainty divided by 2.75. Um, I said equals, I'm sorry. I meant to say divided by. Don't know why I did that. So there's our relative uncertainty, and we can just turn it into a percentage and add some decimal places here. So 0.4% uncertainty. So we could state this number as 2.75, um, command option, no, shift option, plus or minus, shift option plus or minus, um, 0 0.01 meters per second per second. And that's the statement of our acceleration. Or we could write 2.75 option shift plus. Um, that's next to the delete key, the plus equals. And then we'll say 0. Point, well, actually, here I want to say meters per second per second. Option shift plus 0. 0.4 percent. These are saying the same thing. OK, we're stating the acceleration and the uncertainty as a measurement or a relative uncertainty. OK, so I know we're covering a lot, but let's go on to the plot. We want to plot acceleration on the x and free body on the y and Newton 2 also on the y. So I'm going to start up here and highlight all three columns down to the zeros. That null value is going to help us um, create a trend line that goes backwards. Pardon me for one moment. <coughs> Yeah, aren't you glad this is a movie? I'm not sitting there in front of you. <laughs> so let's go ahead and plot these. In this version of Excel, there's a chart menu right here. And I'm going to go into, well, those knuckleheads. They moved it on me. We want to look for scatter. Scatter. There it is in this whole list scatter and then I right click and I say move the chart move it to a new sheet call it chart 2 that's fine so inventive here this right here we actually want to format it as a line because it's the Newton 2 force and we made it to be perfectly linear if we had not made it perfectly linear meaning we had used the total mass instead of the average total mass we'd actually have a true scatter but since we use the average total mass, we can actually use the scatter. So I'm going to go back into here into scatter and choose smooth line. And it's perfectly straight because the data was linear exactly. We're going to right click on the real data for free body applied force and choose add trend line. And in the options, we're going to turn on display equation and display r squared value, the last two checkboxes. And then we'll see our slope and our intercept. And those values. If you look at them carefully, they match the values that we got over here when we typed in those equations, the slope and the intercept. Okay. Now, to work further on this graph, we're going to um, go into chart layout. And then the, later, the earlier version of Excel, an older version, it's actually in a tool menu up here that you get these um, axes. So x-axis, we're going to call this what? This was supposed to be the acceleration acceleration measured in meters per second per second. Okay. And then we could add a, a y axis title vertical axis and we could call this what? I'd call it just force in newtons. Okay, because there's two forces. There's applied force, and then there's Newton 2 force. Newton 2 is the theory, and applied force is the, um, the data. There's a, a few ways to get a text box on here. 
um, we'd like to go up here and say insert text box, but that's not available. For some reason, they left that out in this version of Excel, silly people. Uh, one way is to go into the media options. And we want to go into shapes. And here's a shape that we could choose. Uh, yeah, Command Z, undo that. Okay, it wasn't done loading. So I click once like that, and then um, I draw that shape. And now I can type in it, believe it or not. I can just start typing. See, it, it doesn't give me a cursor. So I know that's a really strange way to do this. Um, but free body applied force is equal to rectangle one get out of here leave me alone there we go is equal to and now we'd want to put in the slope with units basically write our two equations one of them's free body applied force we're translating this equation and the second equation will be describing this line which has a zero intercept and the slope for the red line here is equal to the slope that we programmed in the um, total mass average okay so what's missing still is a um, two equations that are properly talking about these two lines and then I think we're okay uh oh sample data is not here we're supposed to have some sample data from data studio so let's go back to data studio I guess we haven't been there yet I'm going to clear all the data and bring in just one of these runs. And my data had some goofiness down here. Um, the start condition wasn't just right. So I'm going to highlight this data right here and say fit linear. And it gives me a value. So then I can go up here to edit, copy, and then go back to my... Oh, by the way, we'd probably want to format this to make it look all nice. So we're going to drag it down here. We don't need to see that goofy data below. Just size it up so it looks good. And then we'll do Edit Copy. And then back in Excel, we can do Paste. Oops, I forgot. Pasting just gives us the data. Right here it reminds me, Edit Paste Special. Edit Paste Special. And a picture. And so there's my picture. And now I can go up and say Insert a text box so that's what should be on the graph but it's not available and then I can just describe this I want to answer three things okay three things let's zoom in a little bit here I want to say um, what do I want to say what is being plotted to from whence <laughs> did this data come and then we want to say to uh, what, what, what's the third question we want how did we use this data okay so we'd want to annotate answering these three questions and that's just one sample for the whole experiment. And so, of course, the slope of velocity versus time is the acceleration that this data came from, the smart pulley, and we're using it in the data table as the acceleration for trial one, which doesn't match because this was um, actually my data, 0.146, and these students got something entirely different, which is okay. They just had different data than I have. Okay, so I hope that helps you guys a little bit. Uh, finally, you need some proper units here and fix this to say average mass instead of M2 plus M1. Use the average total mass times acceleration. Atwood's machine, in a nutshell, a rather large nutshell.